sometimes it's the best thing on the table, it's the best option that can be used because the people are in a relationship that is dysfunctional. Every Muslim woman that has been divorced or that Muslim boy that has gone through a divorce because he was in a forced marriage and it didn't work. Now they come to your family in order to get married from your family and you hear that they were divorced and automatically you give them an X because they've been divorced. It's bad that they were divorced. You don't know what the story is. And what is her crime? That you can't give her her look. What is his crime, the youngster? That you can't give him an opportunity just because he was divorced? Divorce is not an indication that the man is bad or the woman is bad. Divorce is a bad that like Salat, like Juma, like anything else. You do it the right way, it has some benefit. You do it the wrong way, it's going to harm you. Abu Bakr divorced, Umar divorced, Uthman divorced, Ali divorced, Radi Allah anhum. And I'm not standing here condoning divorce, especially when a person is irresponsible. I'm making it clear that if you divorce the wrong way, if you divorce for the wrong reason, then this is what is blameworthy. There are four ways that a woman is divorced in Islam. The first is when a divorce is issued by the man. The second is when she has valid reason and she goes to a court, Shari court or a panel of scholars who has been appointed to nullify marriages and she has the reason, they will look into it, they will address the man, they will see if they can solve the problem. If they cannot, they will award her a divorce, whether he likes it or not. That's in Islam. So she can actually go out and ask for a divorce and she will get it because you cannot oppress a woman. If you are oppressing her, she has the right to seek out and to get a divorce without your interference. And the third way of doing it is if she has no reason whatsoever, she can actually return what you've given her. And this would only be if you agree, if a man agrees to take back the, the mahar that was given and to issue in return what is known as a divorce of khula. Khula meaning you are actually withdrawing now after you have been given back what you gave her in mahar. I've mentioned three ways. The fourth way, if a person happens to accuse his wife of adultery in the presence of a court and in the presence of witnesses and swears the oath that is a specific type of an oath. In that case, the divorce automatically takes place and the two can no longer be together because it's something serious and big. But remember, it would happen if this accusation occurs in the presence of those who are appointed to listen to that type of accusation. Still, we are prohibited from accusing one another of having slept with this one and did this with that one. These are grave statements that we should abstain from, stay away from. Before that divorce takes place, if you see that they are going to get divorced and you're afraid of that, then tell both of them, before you do this divorce, then bring a judge from his side and bring a judge from her side and let both of them sit down and let them judge in the case of what's going on. The judge from his side can be a woman, it can be a man, it can be an elder, it can be a youngster. And the woman from her side, the same thing. It could be her mother, could be her auntie, could be her best friend, it could be an imam, it could be whoever, young, old, rich, poor. The important thing is that the two people who come, they are people who have intellect, they are people who have some wisdom, they have some skills in arbitration. All four of you sit down and listen to each other. Sometimes when we're in a marriage, it's difficult for the man to understand what the wife is saying and vice versa. When you bring those two people in the equation, they help to make the decision. Both of them may say, yes, the divorce is the best thing. Or both of them may say, the divorce shouldn't be done and you guys should give it another chance. So before the husband flies off at the handle or the woman and she runs to the masjid for a khula, this is one of the important steps. I have to make this crystal clear. As it relates to the wali of the girl, the wali of the girl, her father, doesn't have to be her representative. And he should not be the representative. If he's hardcore, if he's difficult, if he's one of those guys who does everything to show I'm the boss, no, he shouldn't be the representative. 
The Prophet mentions Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He is not from amongst us That individual who destroys a woman in her relationship as it relates to her husband That can be her father Her father is jamming up the program Her mother can be the problem It could be different relatives Whatever the case It could be her best friend His best friend A second issue that is critical as it relates to the proper way of getting divorced in the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and many people jump over this issue disregard and ignore it just as we disregard and ignore sitting down with representatives to make islah is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the Prophet with sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the Quran in surah al-talaq ya nabi of Islam Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and those of you who follow him and you practice his religion Ya ayyuhal nabi If you or any of your followers, you men If you divorce a woman Then divorce them at the idda time And fear Allah, your Lord And if you divorce them, divorce them at the idda Don't kick them out of their homes Nor should they leave on their own accord The only time that they should leave If, if the wife was guilty of some clear fahisha she did something crazy. Now in this case, she can leave. Allah Ta'ala said, these are the hudud of Allah. So don't go beyond them. Anyone who exceeds the boundaries of Allah, he has oppressed himself. So he can't divorce her while she's on her minces, and he can't divorce her while he had relationships with her from one period to the next period. This is one of the clear ways that Al-Islam came to reduce the divorce rate. Many of us, because we become angry, we don't have fiqh of the issue, so the man thinks, as long as she's not on her period, I just divorce her. No, that's half of the equation. The husband should not expel the women from the house, nor should the women leave the house from their own accord, unless they did something crazy. But if he divorced her once, he divorced her twice, she has to do her idda inside of the house with the husband. He could travel with her alone. He can be with her alone. He can see her alone. And all of that is an attempt that after some time, if he's waiting for that idda to expire, he's going to desire his wife again. Very important critical issue as well. The legislation of Al-Islam, especially for the men from amongst us, who the divorce has been put in your hand. The woman can't say to her husband, I divorce you. He, she says to him, give me a khula. If he says, okay, she got the khula. She has the right to ask for a divorce, a khula. She has that right. But if she asks for a reason that is not justified, now because of what she's doing it the wrong way, now it becomes a problem for her. To the degree where Allah makes Jannah haram for her. The same thing goes for the man. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the talaq is the hand of the, in the hands of the man. If the man misuses this, this talaq as a weapon to hurt the lady, to harm the lady, to destroy the society, destroy the family, now it's a problem. And that's why the Prophet told the men sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, fear Allah as it relates to these women, because they are almost like captives to you. With one kalima, you could destroy her life. She can't do that to you, but you can do that to her. Anyway, he told us sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in authentic hadith that the divorce doesn't count if the man is extremely angry. That's one of the ways Islam came to reduce the divorce rate. There's no talaq, the divorce doesn't count when the man's intellect has been closed. He's so angry and he's so mad that he is on the borderline of being crazy. He divorces his wife in that state and people come to him and say, hey man, you divorced your wife. He says, no I didn't. He doesn't even know it. That's the meaning of this hadith of the sunnah of the Prophet As for the vast majority of people who when they divorce their wives, they're angry. Mostly everybody is angry. They're in the middle of an argument. Something happened that made him upset. So he comes and he says, you're divorced. And he's upset. But he's not crazy. When people come in and say, you know what you said to your wife? He said, yeah, I told her I'm doing she's divorced. And she come in my face, it's going to be a problem. He knows what he said. For your knowledge and for your information, Ummah al-Islam, this type of anger, the divorce counts in it. So stop calling the masjid. Stop coming to the imam. 
Stop using and hiding behind this excuse. I was angry. I was angry. I was angry. Almost everybody's angry when they're divorced. You tell me when did you see a human being who at breakfast time he was just okay, real calm, real easy, and he just said to his wife, you know, today you're divorced now. You tell me, where did you see that at? There's going to be an argument. There's going to be a fight. There's going to be things that are going on. But the meaning of the hadith is, if his anger is so severe, Al-Islam doesn't hold people accountable for what they do in those kinds of situations. What about if the couple divorce? Even in this, if they follow the sunnah of the Idda period and the wife staying with the husband, what did Allah Azza wa Jal say? Maybe Allah will bring about a reconciliation even after divorce. But shall I tell you when this doesn't work? It doesn't work when the people make talaq in opposition to the sunnah of the Prophet So the man, he says, you are divorced, divorced, divorced. Then there is a mushkil now because he opposed the sunnah. And so what happened is he robbed himself and his family of the chance for reconciliation. He stopped the chance to make things right. More than that, Allah Azza wa Jal said it is better for them to reconcile. Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala said their husbands have the most right in this for them to reconcile if it is reconciliation that they want. When the people follow the sunnah, they have opportunity after opportunity after opportunity for reconciliation. Even if they break up, and even if they go their separate ways, and they marry somebody else, Allah said about the couple three times they divorced, and they broke up, and everything went, and she married somebody else, and then they divorced, Allah said there is no harm upon them if they want to reconcile. Look at the opportunities that Allah gave for reconciliation.